this episode, we take a wrong turn. Is my bum all wet? Oh yeah, your bum's a bit soggy there. Look at all that motion, Look at all that shape and texture. Do you need to check yourself? Oh God! We might get cut off on our way out if we don't get moving pretty soon. The only thing I like more than bushwhacking, Adam, is uh, bushwhacking in the dark. It looks like something out of like Jurassic Park. It's kind of ironic that Grumpton's having a good nosy in there and it looks exactly like his van inside. Wear appropriate footwear. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, I love that. You weren't reading your book that I gave you. Oh yeah, I've already finished that. Which is your favorite bit? Point forward. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so confusing. I'm a professional guide. Just follow me. So I'm in good hands, I should be fine. I'm sure it'll be, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> what am I witnessing? <laughs> I'm a bit of a sucker for a gnarly twisty tree, I must admit. Well, it's 6 a.m. I've had 15 minutes of sleep and I do have a face like a perplexed ostrich. But I'm quite happy because Grumpton and Amanda and I are back here at Cox Bay for a sunrise attempt at the same place we were at last night during sunset. So we might get an absolutely fantastic shot. Did you get did you get any sleep last night on our little uh, highway stop? I got about three hours of sleep. Yeah. And I have a face like an Adam Gibbs on a normal day. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're knackered, but the conditions do look really good. It's kind of similar to yesterday. We've got fog and sunshine. It, the only difference is the sun is coming from the opposite direction, kind of behind where we were yesterday. I have no idea if that's going to work. I've never seen a shot of this location during sunrise light. It might be a total bust, but you never know until you try. beautiful fog and these pink clouds completely different look to what it was last night but it's still absolutely fantastic so uh, just like yesterday we have to get up to the top of that hill unfortunately we've arrived as the best of the light is happening well I think it's the best it might not be we might get even better but I don't think that these clouds will keep their color for much longer Man, if that sun pops up and angles down into the beach, through the trees and hits that fog, we might get some pyrotechnics. But what a gorgeous morning. Look at this business. Now, usually I'd film lots of B-roll showing us hiking up the hill. But seeing as I already did that in the last video, I, I didn't want to waste your time. So let's just skip right to the top. So we're back up the top of the hill and it is absolutely magical. Have a look at this. Was it worth getting up at stupid o'clock and slogging up a steep and sketchy hill? Of course it was. As you can hopefully see, the background's got some absolutely spectacular fog and mist just rolling in off the ocean. And that's beautiful and I am, I am working on that shot right now, but if you look just over there, I'm really fascinated with how the light is just blasting into that, that valley fog and creating all of these beautiful lines and layers with the mountains just behind it. So I think what I'll do in a couple of minutes is I'll put the 100 to 400 on and just zoom right in on a detail and try and get some of that dynamic light. It could be quite difficult to compose, but with light like that, it's just spectacular. So what I've gone for, what I'm really interested in, it's just this little vignette, just this little section from that distant arrangement of islands that you can just see off in the distance there. And aside from the way that the fog's rolling in and the beautiful light that's coming from the side, I also just love that because it's morning, the water's quite calm. And even though that's ocean, that's not a lake, that's, that's the ocean. So there's this ever so slight reflection, which really adds to the shot. So let me show you what I've framed up and I'll, I'll explain the shot. So what I've got, it's kind of like 
a series of layers. Well, it's completely a series of layers. And if you look to each layer individually, there's probably 20 or 30 layers, but I kind of look at it as a series of three layers. So in the foreground here, on this bottom quarter horizontal, you've got these lovely waves lapping in with that fog. And then on the next layer up, you've got that line of trees. And then beyond that, that's when we have the islands right in the center of the frame. And then beyond that, you have these distant mountains, which just kind of fade away to nothing. And I absolutely love that, that layer element. You know, living and working on Vancouver Island, I remember the very first time I came here, the one thing that struck me was how all of the distant scenery, it always looked like a series of layers, kind of like a, a watercolor painting. And that always fascinated me. And this is a perfect example of all of those layers, especially with this fog, because it really softens everything and makes it look kind of like a, a scene that you could just fly right through. I wish I had a drone. Not that I would be allowed to fly it. But. Oh, this is just, it's just magical. So I'm quite happy with that shot. So now I think it's time to go around the other side of the hill where we began yesterday and see what that shot looks like when it's backlit. It could be quite spectacular. And Grumpton went over there about 15 minutes ago and we haven't heard a peep since. So I suspect he's rinsing it for all it's worth. So should we go? And when we reached the other side of the summit, what a glorious sight to behold. If only we'd got up there an hour earlier in preparation for that majestic sunrise. Ah well, we'd just have to stay another night and try again. But maybe I could find a shot in all of this morning fog. I'm absolutely fascinated by the way that this fog is backlit. So the fog is just interwoven between all of these trees. And then of course the sun is rising and, and it's backlight in that fog. Ah, oh, it's, it's just unbelievable. So, I mean, really, I can't really show you what I'm working with because I'm shooting handheld because there's so many shots, there's so many little vignettes. So I've just got my image stabilization on, I've got my autofocus on, uh, I've got it in single shot mode and I'm shooting at fairly fast shutter speeds because I'm shooting directly into the sun. It's really, really bright. So I'm just picking out little sections and I just hit my back button focus and I just get the shot. And there's just so many of them. You know, you think you've found them all and then you, you find another one. It's just unbelievable. So are we gonna come back here tomorrow morning? I think, I think we should. We've got to, haven't we? I think so. It, it looks like something out of like Jurassic Park. Hunting for a story within a story inside a forest of fog while perched atop this unique vantage point was such a joy. And after a few warm-up shots, I finally found the shot I'd been looking for. What a fantastic morning we'd had so far, but stomachs were grumbling and the need for coffee was becoming urgent. Right, so I think, I think we're done now because the light's really harsh. The sun's got to that point where it's, it's not that pleasing. So we'll pack up and head back for what breakfast and an old man nap, you think? Oh, for sure. Yeah, so we'll maybe try and find a new, new parking spot because uh, last night's was a bit loud, a bit, bit of traffic and then uh, while away the hours, have a nap, and then find a spot for, uh, for sunset, eh? Yeah. I've got this secret spot. What are you willing to trade for it? My company. 
I think Grumpton has overvalued that particular commodity. So we enjoyed one last view over the bay and made our way back down the hill to find a new campsite where his royal sourness found a new grump mobile. So we've come down a, a logging road to just have a nap in the, the vehicles and we found this abandoned caravan. Oh. Dodge Caravan and, and Grumpton. Is my bum all wet? Oh yeah, your bum's a bit soggy there. Oh, I hope it's water. There was a bike abandoned behind the... Uh... Yeah, but notice where they're from. Oh, Albertans. Oh, they, they could be in trouble. When does they expire? February 21. But this is, this is kind of what you see on Vancouver Island, is you see abandoned things always accompanied by Lucky beer. Empty cans of lucky beer. It's always lucky lager. Always. It's never anything else. It's always lucky lager. We might not get much sleep here. Oh, it smells a bit mouldy in there. What, what we got in here? Oh, it smells like... I don't know what it smells like. Oof. That's nice. Oh, there's a new... There's a mattress for you. Oh, look. Incense. Oh, incense. Trip on my flute. You see, it's kind of ironic that Grumpton's having a good nosy in there. And it looks exactly like his band inside. <laughs> <laughs> it does a bit, doesn't it? Well, yours has got a bit less mould. Mine doesn't smell that like, bad, though. Look how, look how mouldy this oh, is. Oh, that just stinks, though. That's probably giving us spores. We, I'm probably, yeah, I've probably just knocked off 10, 10 years off my life. Yeah, hold your breath. A pair of Nike Airs there. Oh, pre-molded. Oh. Okay, well, that. No, they probably weren't even from Alberta. Just bought the van and came on a, a west, western road trip through the Rockies and then out to Vancouver Island and then probably just dumped, dumped the truck. it. Yeah, like a one-way road trip. Yeah. Probably picked it up for a thousand bucks or something. Kind of like we did with the murder box in the F4 road trip. Yeah, but we didn't dump it. We gave it away. We gave it away, which was kind of the same thing. Yeah, but we could have. Well, it would have been neat to just blow it up. That would have been good. Yeah, I wanted to just blow it up. That's what we should. In Las Vegas, get one of those big machine guns. And <laughs> just, just fill it full of explosives and watch it go. Wasn't that? We were thinking about doing that. We could have done that, but it was really expensive. Wasn't that like a thousand dollars. Yeah. And it was a bit irresponsible, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't my idea. So we've decided to come to a spot that I've driven past for years, and I've never. Excuse me. We've decided to come to the Shaw Pine Bog Trail and this is a spot I've just driven past ever since I've been on the island. I've never, never seen it, never stopped off and come for a walk. But I'm already interested now because the sign says boardwalks can be slippery, wear appropriate footwear. So I'm, I'm prepared. <laughs> It's pretty cool actually this I've I've always wondered what it was like and it's it just kind of looks like to me it looks like Southwest Australia you know it does not look like what I would imagine you'd see in the Pacific Northwest so I'm basically just looking for interesting characters in all these trees to see if I can spot something that stands out it's cool eh? yeah, it's got lots of interesting characters you feel like you're gonna see a what? An ostrich. I feel like an ostrich would like to just move. That is what ostriches do. That's quite an accurate ostrich impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see a bit more, please. <laughs> <laughs> what am I witnessing? <laughs> Well, as it turns out, I was witnessing the lesser spotted shite stretch, which is extremely rare in these parts. Oh, look at look at this camera move. Now that is high quality. Well, that's it. We've done a we've done a full loop. I mean, you know, not bad. I think in the right conditions, I think we could get something. But I don't think we're allowed to leave the boardwalk, so that kind of limits your creativity. But let's see. Let's read the sign. See what it says we can and can't do. You gotta follow the rules, haven't you? <laughs> Always gotta follow the rules. <laughs> So after some shenanigans, it was time to head to the beach and see if we could find something special for sunset. We just had to find the trail. I think this is the trail to my secret beach. You ready? 
got the crawl. Oh. <laughs> Bit of bushwhacking involved. Oh. Ah! Oh, God! Oh. It's not very often that there's a distinct advantage to being a short ass, but this is one of those rare occasions. Is it Sasquatch? Oh no, it's something far more terrifying. Now, if Academy Awards still had any value whatsoever, Adam deserves to win one. After a gob full of spiders and a few scratches, we finally reached the secret beach. So I absolutely love this place. I discovered this about maybe 12 or 13 years ago, and I've only been back a few times since. And every single time I come here, there's never a soul. I'm almost always the only person on the beach or whoever came with me. And I just love what you've got here. You've got these beautiful little peninsulas and islands and sea stacks. And then in the background, you can see the mountains. And if you get clouds, you get these beautiful clouds, but it's kind of a, a nice bit of mist there in those mountains. And I really like all of this foreground lichen. I'm thinking that this is lichen. It's really cool because you've got, over there you've got like an orange one. Here it's really bright green. And then it turns into this white, which I don't know if it's the same thing that's just died and it's lost its green pigment. And there's also like an orangey color there. So maybe it's all the same lichen and it's just different phases of decay. Or maybe it's some kind of seaweed. If you know what it is, post a comment and let me know. I won't pretend to be knowledgeable about exactly what that is, but what it is to me as an artist is a lovely splash of colour, texture and patterns which I might be able to weave into my composition. But if not, just this backdrop is lots to work with. <laughs> So if I could have my ideal composition, it would have a glassy reflection, but I'd also have that little bit of water just cascading down this little, look at that. Beautiful, I love that. But obviously when you get bigger waves coming in, the water is just pouring off of these rocks and you get that lovely waterfall effect, but then you lose your reflection. So like I said, it's pick your poison, work with what you've got. What do you think? It's lovely. Yeah, you like it lovely so uh you said you, you'd read me book out for chasing awesomeness with gavin hard not not quite accurate but yeah chasing awe with gavin hardcastle that's the one yeah yeah I, I, funnily enough I've, I've got a copy with me you know so you know just for convenience <laughs> what you do you know whenever you know whenever you're ready you know, no rush like do it later right well i'm gonna go and have a sandwich now and uh Wait for the light to get better, and then uh, then I'll start taking shots for reels. What time is it? It's time we read a page from Chasing All <laughs> with Captain <Gavin> Hardcastle. <laughs> oh look, I'll just check. Yeah, it's definitely time we read a book. So I've come back to this idea where I have this this wave that comes in and creates this very gentle loping waterfall here in the foreground, and. It's pretty good right now. There's still no clouds, but it's still quite beautiful. And you probably can't see it on this camera, but way up there on that very, very big tree there, there's a huge eagle's nest. And then there's an eagle sat right on that branch, right underneath the nest, just keeping a watch, making sure I'm not up to any funny business. I promise I'm not, just taking pictures. So that should end up in my shot, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna get anything in the way of clouds. So we'll stick around and wait for the light to fade so that everything's very soft. And then once the sun's gone down and we get that lovely color gradient, then maybe I'll get a shot. But for now, I'm just experimenting with different shutter speeds to see which kind of motion I like best in this uh, foreground here. So let me show you what I've framed up. Ooh. So if you look at this composition, actually I'll just darken it down so you can see the trees on the island. So that is a sea stack and that is an island. So I've got those landing on those two columns left and right. And then the entire bottom half of the frame is all about this motion. Oh, look at that. Let me get that shot. And what I'm trying is different shutter speeds for this foreground shot. So what I did, I'll just brighten this up. When the water recedes a little bit, you'll just see this little bit of seaweed here. 
There, you see that bit of seaweed? So I focused on that bit of seaweed and let's start with, let's say, an aperture of f11. And what I'm doing is I'm trying different shutter speeds. Let's try a quarter of a second. Look at all that motion, look at all that shape and texture. And then I'll play it back and I'll look at the water. And you can see it's totally overexposed. So I'm going to have to play with that a little bit. So let's go for, we'll stop down and force things to be a little bit darker, but I'll keep that quarter of a second shutter speed. So I'm just waiting for that wave to come in and then get sucked back out. And that's when the, that's when all those beautiful shapes and texture happen. Here we go. Look at that. Beautiful. So I'll just check those back. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. So a quarter of a second looks pretty good, but I also want to try one six of a second. So let's try that. And I'll just I'll make it a little bit brighter and go down to let's say F13. What I'm doing here is I'm shooting with no two second timer, which I usually do, but because I don't want to mess around and lose the moment, I'm just accepting that in the foreground there might be a little bit of shutter shock and a bit of blur, but I'm really not worried about it because it's already a blurred texture, it's already a blurred shape. And that's kind of cool, I like that one sixth of a second. So what I'm going to do is try different apertures, different shutter speeds, longer as well, and get different shapes in that foreground. And then when that's all done and I've got as many exposures as I want, what I'll do is I'll just focus on the background, because remember I focused on that seaweed, I'll focus on the trees and I'll get the correct exposure value and I'll just take that shot with a two second timer just for the background. So I've got a perfectly sharp background and I'll just overexpose that as well, just so that I've got some shadow detail. So those two frames are all that I need for the background and then all the other stuff is for this foreground and I'll just mask that in in Photoshop and it's kind of like a 50-50, 50% action in the foreground and then that lovely backdrop that you can see in the background. Very easy to put together. Hmm, there's nothing more boring than an empty blue sky. So I changed it. Just for fun, I thought I'd try Photoshop's Sky Replacement tool, and it actually does a fairly realistic job when you pick a suitable sky. So what do you think? Is this cheating or is this okay? Now that I've come to the other side of the beach, I think I'm facing southwest, and you might just be able to see, but there's a few puffy clouds just creeping their way in to this lovely scene here. So what I really like about this Again, is this island that you can see in the background. Those puffy clouds that are just about to come in and hopefully give me some colour. And then this lovely foreground here because I've got these really interesting shaped rocks. And then the waves are crashing up against these lower rocks and creating some lovely textures. So I'm looking out into the ocean and it looks a lot calmer than it was earlier. So I'm going to risk getting a little bit closer. I'm still going to be quite, you know, I think safe away from the edge of the water, just get a little bit closer to enlarge this white water that pours over these rocks, but still retain that lovely backdrop. That's the plan, let's see if I can get it to work. So I've been playing around with these shutter speeds on this water that you could see creeping in in the foreground here. And I've determined that the one that I like the most is about a quarter of a second it's just enough that you can really see a lot of texture and motion, but it's just enough of a blur to make it not just a static, frozen, bubbly white water shot. And I think what I'll do is capture as many of those as I possibly can, just to get different positions and hopefully get even some single little water droplets blasting through the air. And then once I've got a good selection of those, then I'll take some uh, really long exposures where it's all just a big white mush and maybe blend it all together. But let me show you this composition and I'll explain what I'm doing. What I'll do is I'll just brighten things up a little bit so you can see what's going on in the foreground there. So as you can see, the wave is just coming in gently and it just kind of bubbles over these rocks and then just gets sucked back out. So that's the foreground, but the background, as you can see, is this lovely little island. And if I go down a little bit darker still, you can just maybe see a few little pink clouds just coalescing in the sky there. So I'm hoping 
that they do a little bit more than what they're doing right now because if they do light up what I really love is when you get that color in the sky reflected in the water and in the in the waves and the reflections on the rocks that's what I'm hoping for so we'll see so that is the plan the idea is island puffy clouds and then in the foreground this action and this drama with these waves I might just refine this composition a little bit but for now I'm quite happy with it It turned out okay, but the clouds just didn't really deliver the goods. So I guess I'll just have to keep this one in my back pocket for another time when the forecast looks a little bit more interesting. Those pink puffy clouds pretty much just evaporated. I was getting really excited. They showed up and then it just disappeared. And I think the tide is coming in quite a lot, quite quickly, and we might get cut off on our way out if we don't get moving pretty soon so i think what we'll do is go and get grumpton <laughs> let's go and find him and then we'll head back because we don't want to spend the night here do we do we it's not very comfortable no there's some spiky rocks and, and human feces there is uh, there is a human turd over there yeah so should we go and find grumpton then yeah i think he's over there ah there he is hey adam Hmm? What? What What do you think about the tide? You know that bit that we jumped across? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that was scary. You think You think it'll be all right? Uh, it, is, it is coming in. Yeah, all right. All right, I'll, I'll just finish this shot then. Yeah, we might have to get going, I think. Yeah, 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 you're probably right there, Gavin. Listen, can I get a discount on your book? Nah. Ah, well, that's a bit stingy. Really? Yeah, shall we move on? Oh, all right then. Right, back to the camper. And then uh, maybe a nice campfire at our new camp spot where I'm hoping that Uncle Grumpy will give us a, a reading of Chasing Awe with Gavin Hardcastle, maybe, you know. <laughs> I mean, I did show him my secret beach, so I should, you know. All right, let's hike back through the forest and uh, hope that we haven't got cut off by the tide. As luck would have it, we were fine and just in time to enjoy some lovely pastel colours on the beach before heading back to our depressing campsite. So it's night two at the uh, random highway pullout campsite. <laughs> and um, what are you having for dinner tonight? Gits. Another curry. It's a gits, uh, what is it? Some kind of Indian food, yes, with rice. Another curry. It's very good. Yeah? Yeah. So good that I have to get up in the middle of the night because I'm dying of thirst. It's so, <laughs> it's salty. so salty. <laughs> and that's your curry. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, no comment. Are you sure it's not last night's curry? <laughs> or the after effects of curry? Yeah. I mean, it looks a bit more solid though, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, but it's a bit more hearty. Yeah, about that with your curry and anything tastes good. It's like nectar. I don't think that this van passes the WorkSafe BC guidelines. Let's just uh, show the people this. We've got the uh, got the open flame right next to the firewood. Yeah, we have lots of ventilation. Well, you should show them the, the, that guy's car. Oh, oh, let's do that. Yeah. So our neighbour's got a really cool, cool rig in his, in his van, which is this chimney, which is something that Adam and I talked about getting on ours while on his. Um, look at that, you've got this this chimney here for, I'm guessing for, for burning wood. Is it fiberglass? Must be. Oh, that's plastic. Well, that's just going to melt, isn't it? No, it has to be fiberglass. Have a nice, cosy, open flame fire in, in your van. I, I did have that idea. I thought it looked really. I thought it'd be really good. I, I think it would look brilliant. But it was time to hit the hay for a few minutes of terrible sleep, so that we could try again for another sunrise. Oh, it's 4:30 a.m. I've had five hours of sleep and I do have a face like an undercooked Frey Bentos pie. But I'm actually quite happy because we're off up to Cox Bay Overlook once again. This is our third trip up there and the forecast said it was going to be foggy this morning and it is. It's very foggy everywhere. So I think, I think the conditions might be perfect. Did you get any sleep last night? 
Uh, a little bit. Yeah? How, how, how many hours? Uh, about two, maybe. Oh, that, oh, I got more than you. That's quite novel. I was watching Netflix because we got internet. <laughs> watching Family Guy. <laughs> you weren't reading your book that I gave you. Oh, yeah. I've already finished that. Yeah? Which is, which is your favourite bit? Probably the forward. <laughs> <laughs> so we've immediately hit the trail while in the dark on the way to the beach and then back up the hill. And not looking forward to that rooty climb in the dark. That's <laughs> really questionable. <laughs> but it's what you've got to do, isn't it? At least it's not too too long. Yeah, but I'm in this fog. I don't know if you can tell how foggy it is when I do this. But it is <laughs> it is dense fog, so... Would you walk down this trail on your own at night? Uh, I've done more stupid things. Uh, I've done worse, so... I don't know if I would. Yeah, a bit creepy. It is a bit creepy, especially in the fog and the dark. And all these twisted trees. Oh, you're getting me real nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I like more than bushwhacking, Adam, is uh, bushwhacking in the dark. Is this it? No, that's not it. Oh god, this is. We did the exact same thing yesterday. We got lost on the trail. It's just so confusing. Well, this is where we came in. I think we missed a turn. Oh, I think this is it here. Yeah. Oh, we came in here. Oh, yeah, because that's that stupid branch that we climbed under. Lower, lower. My knee. Oh, shit. My knees aren't fit for the limbo. Well, we just spent 20 minutes going around in a circle. Got completely lost. And now we've ended up back where we started on the trail. <laughs> and we got up an hour earlier today thinking, oh, let's get up there a bit earlier so we can get that light that we kind of were late for yesterday. And I think we just burned up half of our spare time just trying to get on the trail. But I think this is it now. I think, what do you think? I'm a professional guide. Just follow me. So I'm in good hands. I should be fine. I'll let you go first then. Just in case there's any bears, you know. They like the taste of Uncle Grumpy. I don't think so, I'm a bit insinuate. What are you trying to insinuate? Well, we're almost, we're almost back at the top again. And it is Fogsville. It's, well, it's Cloudsville. It's not at all what we were hoping for, but I mean, there's a chance it'll clear up. I really hope it does. Because neither one of us really was up for this hike this morning. We both could have stayed in bed. What do you think? Do you think it's going to lift? I don't know. It's a bit grim, doesn't it? Doesn't look too promising, but I mean, that's the thing about the, the coastline here on the west coast, is it can change really quick. And... Could be spectacular. Could be absolutely fantastic, so... We'll keep trudging on, eh? Yeah. We're almost there. Just this really sketchy bit now. And so we continued the climb with heavy backpacks and unrealistic expectations. It seemed that after all my years of asking for fog, well, it finally showed up. One giant, thick, gloomy blanket of fog. So that's our wonderful viewpoint from yesterday and the day before. That spectacular view just completely wiped out by fog and cloud. Anything can happen, it could clear. I'm not gonna whinge too much. I've hiked all the way up here, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll clear up and we'll, we'll get some nice light. So now we're on the other side of the hill, looking back towards where the sun is rising somewhere. <laughs> but, but it ain't here. I mean, look at this. Just, it's more than fog. We're basically in a cloud, aren't we? <laughs> like, this ain't just fog. But we shall wait. <laughs> we shall, we shall be... Patient and optimistic. <laughs> so we decided to do the only thing we could do, talk crap while waiting. You know what my favorite feature is about any camera bag? What one thing that it absolutely has to have? What's that? It has to be able to fit a copy of Chasing All <laughs> with Gavin and <laughs> Yeah, it's just perfect, really. It's as if Shimoda designed their bag around the book, you know, which, I mean, let's hope that the next one is the same. Is this what you call chasing ore? We are chasing ore right now, aren't we? We're chasing ore and failing quite badly. Oh, that is that is upsetting. We got up extra early 
we got up extra early and hiked up here in the dark, there's a link in the description below. And this is what we got. This is what we got for all of our efforts. Yeah, if you could just, if you could just hold it. Uh, like, as if you love it. Yeah, no, that's, that's better. Look how it shimmers, that little foil stamping there. Just shimmers in the light. You know when you get to a, a location and the light is just crap? What are you gonna do? You know, you're gonna, you're gonna kill time, right? An hour or two, you know. I mean, what better to do than just kind of leaf through the pages of chasing all Gavin Hardcastle? Oh, look at that one. I like that one. What I noticed about this book. No, you didn't notice anything. <laughs> I like that one as well. Like that one. Remember that, eh? I was going to say the text is so book you don't even need reading glasses. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I made the text so big specifically for you because I knew you'd struggle. Right? Oh, remember that, eh? Oh, I do. What a day that was. Oh, I was just there. I've got a video coming out today. Yeah, you, you got a very similar shot, shot to that one. Similar conditions. Yeah, I noticed that. Well, you know, I'll, I'll let you have that one because I, I, I copied that Port Renfrew shot of yours years ago. So fair's fair, isn't it? You know. That's nice. That is, I, I got so lucky that day, those conditions. Don't get any better than that, does it? Because usually it's sunny and blue skies. I, uh, I don't want that. I want, I want, that's what I wanted. You don't often go somewhere and get exactly what you want on the very first attempt. That was my very first try there. There's a link in the description below. Oh, God. Do you, do you want to put it in your, in your bag? No. Just carry it down? No. Look at It's like a glove, though, you know? Look at that, eh? Thanks, Shimoda, for designing your bag around my so book. So if you buy a book, you get a free camera bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not that expensive. Well, while we're waiting for anything to change, for the sun to come up and for those light rays to happen, which I don't think are gonna happen, might as well have a bit of fun with some telephoto vignettes, just zooming into little interesting tree shapes and seeing what I can get with the nice fog in the background. I mean, I'm always complaining about never having fog. Now I've got fog, so the trouble is, a spot like this, the trees are just so densely packed, it's absolute chaos. So trying to find anything that's remotely separate or stand out is it, kind of tricky. But I have found this cool little twisty tree with a nice little spider's web on it. Let me show you this shot. So you can probably just see this the shape of this kind of elbow in this tree here. And you probably can't see it on the back of the camera here, but to brighten it up. Just down here, right in the centre of the frame, is a lovely spider's web just hanging off of that branch. And I'm shooting wide open at f4.5, which gives me a nice little bit of background blur. But obviously the fog is what makes the shot. So it's not a killer shot, but it's, it's not bad for filler. I mean, you know, we've got time to kill, so... Did, did you... Do you need to check yourself? Well, seeing as all we've got is fog, I'm gonna go and try and look for some interesting trees to place in this gorgeous fog. It's not what we came here for, but that's what we've got. So I'm gonna try and work with that. So I'm going to go back to the classic viewpoint because there are a few more clearings there so you've got more chance of finding a tree that you can separate and then hopefully I can get some nice layers of fog in the background. It's a plan C, it'll do for now but then if I'll keep an eye on what's going on where the sun is rising and then if we see th anything happen we'll just dash back here and... I think it'll lift at some point. Yeah. yeah. It might be, it might be long after we've got to go though. Yeah. But rather than give up, I just had to keep on trying. And it didn't take long for something to finally catch my eye. So I found this really cool looking dead tree. I'm pretty sure it's dead. 
And I just love how twisty a gnarly it is. I'm a bit of a sucker for a gnarly twisty tree, I must admit. But with all of this fog, it creates these beautiful layers in the background. So you can just see everything fading off into this lovely gray. It's quite, quite magical. So I'm gonna work this composition a little bit. I'm basically just shooting handheld. Um, and I might not even bother to get the tripod because I do like a little bit of a background blur. So if I'm shooting wide open, I just go handheld. But we'll see, I'll work it a little bit more. And then uh, if I do get the tripod out and focus stack it and do all that business, then I'll, I'll talk you through the composition. But just have a look at this. In the end, I didn't bother with the tripod or focus stacking. Sometimes it's just nice to enjoy the freedom of handheld photography. And while the light wasn't really everything that we'd hoped for, it was still worth hiking back up that hill once again. Well, at least that's what I thought until we climbed back down the hill and reached the car park. So we just got back from the hike uh, after parking in this car park just before 6 a.m. Uh, so I've got to pay a, a $200 fine for parking here half an hour before the, you know, it's officially open and hiking up the hill and hiking back down. Adam's van didn't have a ticket, but I did. So the difference is you've got a camper. They just assume that you're sleeping in there. Yeah, but this looks like a homeless person's van. So, so they took pity on you. Well, look at me. Yeah, true enough. <laughs> 